The uh, interferon phase three study conducted by the MPD Research Consortium was an upfront study uh, in high-risk patients with polycythemia vera and essential thrombocythemia looking at hydroxyurea versus pegylated interferon alpha 2A. So a randomized study, and really the first large randomized study comparing those, those two agents uh, and the, the first uh, randomized study uh, in essential thrombocythemia. With that study, my colleague John Mascarenas reported at this meeting the, the top level information which shows pegylated interferon was clearly active. Uh, in the first year, I think one can best say that it's not inferior to hydroxyurea regarding primary endpoints of controlling blood counts, uh, impact on bone marrow, uh, features of that nature. Uh, additionally, we have reason to speculate that longer duration of time may be impactful in terms of deeper molecular responses for interferon, but that'll take a longer amount of time. So the interim results, very positive, you know, but show you know, clearly at least non-inferiority. As part of this trial, we conducted some very detailed patient-reported outcome assessments, both regarding MPN symptoms, using our validated tool of the MPN symptom forms, as well as some specific toxicities related around pegylated interferon for us to better understand. Flu-like symptoms, things of that nature. So one, we were able to quantify you know, that there certainly is a low-grade uh, amount of toxicity that can come with pegylated interferon that doesn't necessarily show up well with a traditional adverse event reporting. And adverse event reporting doesn't really capture low-grade toxicity to any great degree. What we can say is that it really did not lead to any significant discontinuations, and many of those symptoms do seem to trail off over time. We saw as well that there was an interesting dynamic in terms of the overall MPN symptoms uh, over time. Uh, we're seeing, again, through the first year, I would say that probably non-inferiority is probably the best way to look at it, uh, which I think in, in a lot of ways is, uh, is very helpful. You know, I think they help different types of symptoms uh, at different points. Interferon may have more impact on symptoms such as pruritus and some of those uh, metabolic-based symptoms. Hydroxyurea has a, a more rapid impact on symptoms that may be associated with increase in counts. You know, headache, uh, things of that nature, uh, erythromyalgia, difficulties with concentration. You know, so we're still sorting through uh, all of the information in this interim analysis, but increasingly we're very mindful that it's not only about symptoms kind of an aggregate, but the pattern of symptoms uh, can be very interesting between both sets of agents.